composition drift. When we're doing a clean load with one kettle load or two, you're working at whatever your pace is. The pace is relative to what weight you're using and what your condition level is. But whatever pace I'm working, when I feel like I'm about to get fatigued, I have to rest, I learn to rest here. And in order to get a true rest, I have to basically be holding the weight with my posture versus with my arm. Okay. So that's the first thing we're going to cover is this alignment, is getting the correct alignment so that when I'm here, I can relax. The same is with uh, common pressure or it's like the eye of the storm. Okay. You have stress, which the stress is the load itself, and then you have to be relaxed under stress. Okay. And this is counterintuitive, which is why we need to train. Intuition is not always the best thing. Okay. Intuition, if, say, in, in martial arts or self-defense, if someone attacks you, our intuition is to do this, right? But training teaches us to move into it. Okay. So, the kettlebell lifting, our intuition is that when we start getting tired, is that we want to go fast and just finish it because it hurts and we want to get over. We have to train ourselves to relax and slow down and recover, and if I do that, I can keep working all day, all right? But in order to be able to do that, I have to have my alignment correct. So that's what we're going to focus on. There's six points of alignment that we have to, that we have to be aware of. And I'm going to go over those six points, and we're going to practice it, and then we're going to get into a time set with the thing. Okay, the first issue is the legs from the ground up. When I'm here, I want my legs to be straight. Intuition, for an untrained person, they're going to want to do this. When you start getting tired, you want to like completely relax like this. But when my legs are bent, the quad is contracting. And as long as the quad is contracting, I can't get a full recovery. The muscles has to, has to work. It's being fueled here. So I want to take the muscles out of the equation, and I do that by using my joints. Okay? So I'm just, using my structure to support the load versus the muscles. Okay, so I straighten the legs, and now my quads can relax because the knee is locked in position. It's not rigid. I'm not hyperextending the knee. I'm just extending it. So the legs are straight. That's the first one. Not here. Legs straight. Second point, the elbow rests on the hip. Specifically, the iliac crest. This bony apparatus here. If I'm here, then my trap is engaged, my biceps engaged. Those muscles are going to fatigue. Even with a light weight, after a few minutes, that light weight starts feeling like a heavy weight. Yeah. So I have to relax my trap, relax my arm, and I do that by sinking, and I drop my elbow on my hip. So I'm using my structure. This would be analogous to a, a parent holding a child standing in the line, and I'm going to hold an arm, which is a hip. Yeah. It's also analogous to martial arts grappling arms. When you're throwing somebody, you're not going to throw the arm. You can use your kick to lever. So I'm using my hip and then the elbow rests on the hip. So the load is on my hip and that's why my knee is straight and the force is going straight on. Third point is where the kettlebell sits in the game. I want the kettlebell to sit diagonally. I have the webbing of the thumb diagonally to this base of the thumb. So it's here, diagonally. If it's off even by an inch, it throws off everything. If it's up here, it puts a lot of pressure on the wrist and the forearm starts getting fatigued and I'm not going to be able to hold it. So a lot of times in training, the grip will get out before your cardio respiratory system is fully completed. So I want to let the grip relax as much as possible. And I have it here. So now it's aligned over my forearm versus on the metacarpals of the wrist. So not here. Here. Next point, there should be no gap on the medial side and the pinky side. There's no gap between the hand and the kettlebell. So if my hand is over here, there's a gap here. Okay. This gap creates instability. So if I have that gap, the kettlebell is going to shake every time. And that little shaking, 5, 10 reps, no big deal. But if you're trying to do 100 or 200 reps, Every time it shakes, it loosens your grip and it weakens your grip. So it affects your ability to keep working. Okay? So I want this to be right here against my hand, so it's stable, there's no shape. Okay? 
to know that and you can so. Fourth point is the aligning of the bell to be over my center mass. My center mass is over my base of support. Resistance training I have what's called the combined center mass is the mass of the weight and the mass of my body has to be in the room. So like this, my center mass is here, the center of the weight is here. So as time goes on, this starts to turn. The gravitational force is exerting itself vertically. So this is that now. These watches are going to pull from my arms and get up. So I want to have the bell over my center of mass. So if someone were to push, it's like pushing against my bell, I'm pushing against the ground. Okay? So not here, but here. Okay? The chest should be hollow. Not like this, not like this. Hollow the chest. Okay? So relax. Right. And then the last point is the form. I don't want my I don't want to have a death grip here where my, my form is flat. This is going to fatigue very rapidly. I want to stretch out the form. And the way I do that is by, call this opening the wrist here, I lengthen this medial side of the wrist, this stretch. And as I stretch my wrist here, it allows my form to relax. Now the extensors become little. Extensors have more endurance. So this part of the form is doing more work and allows this form to relax. So not frustrated, relax the grip. And to help with that, you can just pull your fingers behind the knee like this. And that's it. And just push the palm up slightly. That stretches the wrist. Okay. So knee straight, elbow on the hip, kettlebell diagonally in the palm, no gap on the knee side. Stretch the wrist, bring the kettlebell over the center mass up to the outside, and follow the chest. Those are the aligning points. So every rep, whether I'm doing one rep or a thousand reps or any other number, I always come back to this position. So I can work as, as much as I want, but when I get tired, this is where I stay. And I recover. And if I can recover, then I can keep working. Okay? So it truly is an annual labor. You keep going all day. All right. So to learn, to start with this.